And I'm really glad to have one of the smartest people I know on. She's a best-selling author of In Trump We Trust and Adios America and many other other fine books. It's Ann Coulter. Ann, how are you? Uh, a little depressed. And you? <laughs> <laughs> it's been that kind of week, huh? Uh, so, Steve Bannon, let's just jump right in. He's gone. He's out. Uh, allegedly, he resigned two weeks ago, or the president pushed him out today. Long story short, you think there, there's one entity to blame for this, don't you? Well... Um, uh, I, I, I've heard that you're blaming the media. Yeah. Oh, yes. It, I mean, it's not good. I ultimately, of course, it's Trump's decision. But, right. um, you know, I, I don't think it's a good idea to let the media know how easy it is to manipulate you as president or manipulate you, as Tawana Brawley said. Um, and <laughs> and it, it, it seems perfectly clear. I mean, you don't have to... You don't have to be an expert in body language. Uh, every time Bannon's name comes up, uh, Trump, sorry, President Trump, um, yes. you know, loses his cool and, and says, you know, you know, everybody's saying he won this campaign for me. Oh, no, no he only came in in August. I right. won the campaign. Well, right. yeah, okay, that's the, what the media is saying. I, I have no evidence that Bannon himself is saying it, and who cares if Bannon is saying it? And Trump himself goes around saying Kellyanne Conway won this for me. Well, both of them came on in August. If right. anyone other than Trump, and obviously, yeah, it was Trump. It was his issues. He has amazing political instincts. This is why we love him. Um, we, were, we thought, finally, finally, after, after 30 years, we're going to get... A president not controlled by, gold, by Goldman Sachs. And, uh, right. sorry, millions of voters who haven't voted for 30 years. Doesn't matter, Republican, Democrat, um, or even Donald Trump. Goldman Sachs is at the helm, so don't worry. Wall Street will be getting its tax cuts. It's Ann Coulter. Hopefully everybody listening and watching right now will look up Tawana Brawley and get what that reference was. It was a good one. Um, all right. So uh, I, I, and Al Sharpton's involved in that as well. So we've got we've got a situation where we've got a president whose agenda you loved and I loved. And if he if he does the agenda, the guy's right. going to win and he's going to get reelected in 2020. If he keeps right. on fighting the battles of the media and of these voices that keep on, you know, uh, jabbing at him, he's going to lose in 2020. How do we get him back on track and keep him there? Well, my suggestion to him on Twitter was, if you really want to prove to us that Bannon had nothing to do with, with your winning the nomination and then winning the presidency, um, what you need to do now, it's got to be pedal to the metal on, on raising taxes on Wall Street, um, which he promised during the campaign that carried interest loophole. He promised to get rid of it very first debate right. and repeatedly thereafter. Um, start deporting illegals, end NAFTA, bring the jobs back, and build the wall. And if he does all those things, okay, I'll say, my gosh, Mr. President, you're right. Steve Bannon had nothing to do with your success. But it, it just seems to me people like us should be a little depressed today because there's no one on the president's side in the White House anymore. I think it's going to be a little bit easier to get these things done when the entire Democratic Party is against you, the entire Republican Party, the entire Washington bureaucracy, the entire media, and I'm including a lot of the, quote, conservative media. Yeah. Um, and it's just you and the White House surrounded by all the people you hired from Goldman Sachs. Don't you want to have one guy in the White House on your side? Yeah, it would, it would make certainly make sense. Uh, Steve Bannon, by the way, this just came down from the Hill, has mm -hmm. now rejoined Breitbart. That didn't take very long. Fantastic. Do you think he'll be an advocate, or, or will he be an enemy now of the president? Should be an advocate, no? I think he'll probably be like you and I are. We, we, yeah. we reward the president when he does good things. We complain when he does bad things. This is a real transactional presidency, and there will be no treats for doing nothing. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Ann Coulter, a best-selling author, great conservative mind, great American mind. The president's from Jamaica, Queens, New York. And just follow me on this. My mother's from Jamaica, Queens. Mm -hmm. Judge Judy is from not far from there. The, the want and the desire of people from that area is, if you attack me, I'm going to attack you back. And he's done that constantly to the point to where I was like, yeah, go get him. To, to Now I'm saying, hey, just let it slide off your back. You're not doing anything. He's got to do the agenda, and he's got to stop fighting these idiots, right? They know they can pick a fight with him, and they'll knock him off of his, off of his agenda in about two seconds. Why doesn't he ignore Jim Acosta? Why doesn't he ignore Jim Shuto and Wolf Blitzer and these idiots? Oh, you couldn't be more right. Um, well, two things on that. One is, I, I, 
I mean, I'd like it more if you'd follow through on denouncing all, all the, I agree, fake media as yeah. fake lying media. But instead, you know, he tells his followers he does this great job bashing the media who do deserve bashing. And then who does he give all of his interviews to? He's calling That's Maggie true. Haberman every day. He gives, you know, special access to the New York Times. He gave that interview to Lester Holt. Why isn't he giving all of his interviews to Breitbart, Daily Caller? Why yeah. isn't he calling all on the concern or having directing his communications director um, or press secretary to call on the conservative media? No, the conservative media is totally dissed in the press briefing room. That's one point, and an answer to your question, why does, why does he do all of this? Um, but why does he care what the media says? Um, well, he is human, and he's a flawed human being, and, yeah. and um, I, I, I mean, they're funny, a lot of his flaws, but they, they, are. Can also be, they can also be not helpful to getting the good stuff done. Um, and the good stuff that we love them for, these amazing political instincts and just taking the most popular issue, finally taking the side of the American middle class and the American working class. Um, but no, he surrounded himself with the ruling class. It's a uh, best-selling author, amazing human being, and, and uh, love having you on Ann Coulter. To, to the point that you made, I had the president, who was then the, the, uh, the nominee, on six times. Had him on all the time. It was great. It, we, there were long conversations about agenda stuff. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking through my little prism of my little show, uh-huh, but uh-huh. I, can't, I can't even get their attention anymore. I mean, I can't get yeah. anybody to say, yeah, he'll spend five minutes with you to talk to your you know, 100 radio stations. I don't understand why he would sit down with a Lester Holt thinking that he somehow would, would be better off for that. I know, and he keeps doing it. And it's, i got to tell you, it's, besides the fact that it's not helping him, it's certainly cross-programming with his message. Um, you know, the failing New York Times, the lying CNN. Well, you're the one who keeps elevating yeah. them by giving these, them the exclusive interviews and dissing the media that supports you. Does, does he need to just stop worrying about going to bed, feeling like he was victorious against some dumb reporter, and maybe go to bed and say, you know, I started the wall today, or I cut taxes today, or I did something that I said I would do today? I think Is that really all it could, it's boiled down to? Absolutely. I mean, if I've, I've said this before. If Donald Trump does two things, doesn't start another war and builds the wall, he will be great, the greatest president of my lifetime. That, that seems like, you know, two fairly simple objectives. He's a builder. He's a developer. This is the one right. signature promise for, for, you know, 16 months of this campaign. Just build the wall and don't start a pointless war. Um, <laughs> I mean, I right. like a few yeah. other things, like renegotiating the trade deals like he promised, like, right. like getting hedge fund managers to pay the same tax rate that I do. Um, um, like deporting illegals and ending Obama's unconstitutional amnesty for, for dreamers. Uh, that's another one. It's not a heavy lift. Um, the Trump White House is still issuing permits to illegal aliens whom Obama, and Obama himself said it was unconstitutional until he did it. Um, Obama just decided, oh, well, Congress can't pass amnesty, so I'm, it's just going to be an executive order. Um, I'll give dreamers, i.e. any illegal alien under 30 or claims to have arrived here under 30, give all yeah. of them amnesty. No, the Trump White House is still stamping those work permits. That's something Republicans have run and won on two election cycles in a row. And and they failed to do anything about it now that they're in power. It's Ann Coulter. The last uh, the the two most recent books are in Trump We Trust and Adios America. Right? Is there a new one after that? Uh, no, I think it's going to be. <laughs> I thought I could you know <laughs> kick my heels back on November eighth. It turns yeah. out no. This is going to be. We have to watch this guy like a hawk and try to hold his feet to the fire. I was about to give up. I will say, um, earlier this week, this is a roller yeah. coaster presidency. On Tuesday, early in the day, I thought, wow, I mean, I come face to face with these violent leftists and have yeah. for, for more than a decade now. And when they got Trump to condemn only one side and back down, I, and also all the conservative media, um, you, you can count on one hand the number of people saying, wait, hang on, hang on a second. We. We, you, you can't just call somebody the, the Klan, and, and I guess there were hundreds of people there. We still don't know what any of the speakers were going to say in Charlottesville. Right. Um, they had a permit, but they weren't allowed to speak. And, of course, the media fixates on, 
on whomever has a swastika or, I don't know, something that looks like a KKK thing. You know, I used to speak at CPAC every year. There were 10,000 mostly college-aged, fresh-faced right-wingers, and there was always, this isn't the same thing, but you'll get my point, there was always sure. one nut walking around, dressed up like George Washington. You'd watch it on <laughs> C-SPAN, and you would think that's all was attending CPAC. Right. Not walking around. Well, okay, so I'm sorry, I don't trust you, media. Um, after Trayvon Martin and, and, and George Zimmerman, that thing, remember the only pictures we saw of Trayvon were his, like, baptism Yeah, he was, like, photos? eight years old or something, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trusting the media on that. And then I was really depressed, and then Trump held that magnificent press conference, and I thought, oh, my gosh, once again, he's like Gary Cooper out there all alone in high noon. Right. And I loved him again. He, no other Republican would do it. They're all running for the, heel, for the hills. All you have to do is, is say racist, and, and every elected Republican and half the alleged conservatives on TV, um, right. you know, all they do is start giving their breast-beating statements about I oppose the Nazis. I feel like going around giving them all little gold stars. Good for you. Well, well did you see the garbage that Mitt Romney posted on Facebook? Mitt Romney posted like a book on Facebook trying to repudiate the president and basically holding up on high Black Lives Matter, and, and I call them anti-fart because I think anti is a dumb name. <laughs> but, but I mean, he went on and on about these idiots uh, and how the president needs to apologize about what he said. What he yeah. said was true. Now, now the yeah. Russian thing, it's the last question, Ann, and, and I really appreciate your time today. Let's talk more often um the yes. russian thing went away there is no collusion it's been proven julian assange it says he has verifiable proof there was no collusion with russia russia wasn't involved that went away the media knows it was a nothing a burger which is a new saying these days but now the president's a racist and he can't shake that because the indoctrinated lemmings out there that want to hate him are are now regurgitating it over and over and over lady gaga with 60 million followers on twitter is regurgitating it madonna wants to blow up the white house you've got idiots on Saturday Night Live, who people pay attention to for some reason, regurgitating that he must be a racist and a Nazi sympathizer. If you're in his ear, what do you tell him as far as how he needs to deal with this and make it go away? I would say, Mr. President, you have something no other president has ever had. You have an unshakable bond with the American people. It doesn't matter what Lady Gaga says. It doesn't matter what anyone says. The Access Hollywood tape doesn't matter. None of yeah. this matters. What matters is doing what you promised. And that's it. Forget all the noise. Do what you promised. And 2020, you're going to look like roses because you can say, look at the 30 things I did that I said I would do. Yeah, he's right during the campaign. He could have shot someone on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> well, I'm, glad, I'm glad he didn't. That probably would have hurt his chances a little bit, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But if he doesn't build the wall, if he doesn't start deporting illegals, if he doesn't renegotiate trade deals and bring back jobs, one of the most beautiful things he said at that press conference um, where he correctly said there were good people on both sides and there were b very bad people on both sides. Um, right. He was asked at the end of it, well, you know, what are you going to do to bring racial healing to the country? And he had absolutely the perfect and the correct answer. I'm going to bring jobs back. Period. He's Walk totally away, drop right. the microphone. He's totally right. Yeah. So do hey. that, Mr. President. I'm with you 100%. And we appreciate the time. Let's talk soon. Great to talk to you again. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. All right, you too. All right, Ann Coulter, uh, author, pundit, somebody who just does it. Hashtag Ann Coulter don't care, Carrie. And, and I think that that's probably good when you're coming up against some some uh, some evil on the other side that will say and do anything. Sometimes you need somebody who hashtag just don't care. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. I do. 1-800-383-9624, JoePags.com.